Good morning. My name is Larry Jamison, and yesterday was Sunday, December the 20th, 2020, uh, the fourth Sunday of Advent. And because of the coronavirus surge, we are having our drive-in services again on Sunday morning at Prospect Trinity and Asbury United Methodist Churches. At Prospect and Trinity, uh, they're having a joint service at 10 o'clock in the Prospect parking lot. And at 1115, Asbury Church is having their drive-in service in uh, their parking lot as well. And then last night at 7 o'clock, we had a lovely candlelight service at the Harrington Fire Company parking lot. And we had about 65 cars attend, and we all enjoyed Christmas music and live uh, reenactment of the nativity with live animals. I am so grateful for all of the volunteers who made that uh, event a success. The title of my sermon is Partners Witnessed Christmas. Dear ones, we have witnessed Christmas and not just the season, not tinsel, trees, mistletoe, Santa, elves, reindeer, gifts, dinners, cards, and twinkly lights. You know, all of us together as friends have witnessed Christmas in our hearts. You know, Jesus has created this miracle of grace inside of you and inside of me. And let me tell you how. You know, it all started with the Hebrew prophets. You know, our Lord revealed to the prophets visions of his plan to send Jesus, the Messiah, to save us from our sins. You know, did you know that the Bible contains more prophecies about the second coming of Jesus than it does about the first? So the work of the prophets is not over. Their predictions are still relevant right now, and part of the magic and the wonder of Christmas is the hope and the promises of God in our hearts and how reliable those promises are. You know, we share that hope together as a community, and God has put his love into our hearts and made us alive together and filled us with the power of his Holy Spirit, inspired by love and delighted by the majesty of knowing where we came from and where we are going. Prophecy and promise are a big part of Christmas that we all share in our hearts. Now, we are part of a connection that uh, Mary and Elizabeth shared. You know, I preached about this very special friendship that Mary and Elizabeth shared, uh, and the moment when Mary came into Elizabeth's house and the prenatal John the Baptist moved with excitement inside of Elizabeth's body, you know, but both mother and baby were filled with the Holy Spirit, both of them. And that means they were able to point to Jesus and identify him as the Messiah. You know, Elizabeth was given inspired words that are recorded in scripture, and John expressed his calling non verbally. Oh, there is so much detail in this Bible account. I truly enjoy talking about this on December the 6th. Now, what I want to tell you right now is that we share an intimate friendship between Mary and Elizabeth and their heightened level of trust and their inspired gifts of insight and prophetic understanding and their incredible joy of having a friend who understands what you're going through and knowing that you are not crazy, but God really is using your life to make a difference, to heal, to guide, and to bless. You know, that friendship is ours right here, even in the midst of a pandemic that tries to ruin our parties, our assemblies, our hugs, our face-to-face -face moments together. COVID-19 cannot stop God or his plan to enrich us with deep friendships. You know, we are standing shoulder to shoulder with Mary and Elizabeth and with one another. We are part of the connection that is shared by the shepherds and wise men. You know, it doesn't matter if you're a blue collar person or living paycheck to paycheck or, or if you're rich like Bill Gates. Um, God has given us a bond that transcends social status, education, or privilege. You know, we stand shoulder to shoulder with the shepherds and the magi because God has directly informed us through the Bible that Jesus is the Messiah. And because of that, we are never alone. You know, like the shepherds, we embrace our humility together, and we serve together, doing little things for Jesus. You know, when we humble ourselves, God lifts us up. If all you do is just to make a phone call 
or, or to put a dollar in the collection plate or, or struggle just to say uh, your prayers, your daily prayers in a faithful way. You know what? God is going to honor that. God is going to take our small offerings and bless a lot of people because, you know, we were humble and faithful, and God uses that. So like the Magi, we embrace our nobility, and we are instructed by the Holy Spirit to respect ourselves and each other. Dignity, self-care, self-respect, oh, those come from God, don't they? And we have been adopted into God's family, and now we're part of a righteous kingdom that is never going to end, that is never going to be compromised or embarrassed. We stand shoulder to shoulder with the humble shepherds and the majestic magi because their gifts have become our gifts. In Philippians 1.3, the Bible says, I thank my God every time I remember you. In all of my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. It is right for me to feel this way about you since I have you in my heart, and whether I'm in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me, end quote. Oh, I love verse 7 where Paul says, I have you in my heart. You know, all of us together as friends have witnessed Christmas in our hearts. Jesus has created this miracle of grace inside of you and inside of me. Thank you for listening to my sermon. <laughs>